All right, James, I'm starting on your radio here that you sent. So they took a bite out of the box for some reason here. So, um, but yeah, we'll get this unboxed and take a look. Yeah, that's an awesome pack job you did there. So I'd like to see that. All right, so here's your rig. Right there for you. So I'm gonna open it up and get it out. All right, you got a nice clean looking radio. It looks brand new. Appreciate you sending the label and also the um, payment. So that's awesome. Makes my job a little easier. I got your uh, 503 HD. I'll, I'll show that later. Uh, right now, we'll just focus on the radio. So I'm going to shut off your echo and I'm going to shut off your Roger beeps for the time being. Um, and I'm going to check your receiver. So I'm going to go to this is in 27185. So I'll do that and I'll be back. All right, so it's hearing good on AM, so that's great. I'd like to see that. At about minus 113 with 30% mod, and you're right at uh, 12 dB. So that's perfect for this one. All right, so I'm checking lower sideband, and that's really good too. So minus 126. Um, it's just a touch over 12 there, so maybe just a tad, tad bit better than that actually. But it's working good on receive too, so no issues there. All right, so here it is on uh, sidebands. It's the factory mic that would come with it. And mic gains up all the way, our power's up all the way. I'm just checking the power of it. So let's see what it's doing. About 48 watts, which is okay. Back that RF power all the way down. One, two, three, one, two, three. Yeah, that's too strong right there. So probably somebody went in and adjusted it a little improperly there because it should do a lot less. Um, we'll look at sideband two tone really quick all right so yeah it's a little dirty on the transmit obviously so i'll run the uh, t third order intercept test and just see how it looks there it's probably not going to look too good though yeah so it's about let's say 24 25 looking at those two numbers right there i always add six to it that's what i say about somewhere between 24 or 25 it can be better and it will be better but you know i'm sure it sounds good it's just you know, it's never a matter of they don't sound good, it's just what you're doing to the band causing some bleed over and interference and the power's not being sent properly, it's kind of spreading out too much, so taking up too much bandwidth basically. Okay, here's AM, just the microphone, our power's all the way up. Wife decided to vacuum, I got the door shut in here, but the dog was barking at the vacuum and everything else, so. 12 watts, swinging about 49. Usually bump that down to about 8, I think it works better there. All the way down, 2.47, it's swinging upwards, I don't know. Uh, it catches a big peak every once in a while, so, you know, I wouldn't say it's consistently at 49, but every once in a while it does jop, jop up there or whatever, bump up there, so. Uh, we'll let's take a look at the AM mod and see what that's like too. And then we'll go to FM. Whoop. Blow us out of the room here on FM. Uh, FM's about one or so all the way down, and all the way up is about 34. Okay. Just one last thing to check the deviation on FM. So we'll come back over to the spectrum analyzer and I'll bring that test up. So it's about 3.3, so it's not terrible. I'll uh, increase that. I usually try to give you about 4.1 if the radio will allow. I'll go back to AM and we'll look at the waveforms really quick. I forgot to show that. All right, so this is our carrier. It's 12.3 uh, watts. So we'll modulate this to one kilohertz tone. See how it's um, how it's flattened on the top? That's because the carrier is too high. That's a common thing with these. You need to bump it down, back it down, whatever. I'm lowering it. It's looking more normal there. Um, and that's about 10, so. But, um, yeah, it doesn't look like it's pinched or anything. We'll go to the low mod. Kind of looks like it's factory. Maybe, maybe factory on this, I don't know. It's obviously hasn't been 
really messed with too much there. That doesn't look too bad either. So it's it's real clean on the spectrum analyzer. This is 20 kilohertz. It's all the way down on power. It's all the way up. Even though it looks like there's some stuff here, these are real weak signals here. We go to our peak and go to peak table. Whoops, it was already on. So you can look at like number 10 is at uh, 27209. So, you know, we're um, doing pretty well for that. You can see the power is absolutely next to nothing there. Zero dBm or something. So real low power. So it's not too bad on that either but uh, we'll crack it open and try to make it a little bit better for you I need to check the frequency too because I'm not sure where we're at there we're not sitting too bad though this is AM frequency so it's, it's probably right about where it would be normally um, then we'll go to sideband check the frequency there yeah all in all it's in really good shape so this is sideband frequency this is lower side on channel 20 so that's really good you got the 1k tone bringing us down one whole kilohertz down but yeah that's nice so obviously when I open the lid up things are going to change so that's to be expected so I don't think I have to do much for a frequency alignment on this I think it's really good so um, sometimes it's when it's working like this it's better not to mess with it let's check upper just to see what that is I mean it's through the service mode so it's not a big deal but um, the yeah, upper is about 20 hertz so I can I'll look at it and redo it after I obviously get done inside I'll I'll put the cover back on and let it sit for a while because um, it needs to get back up to temp on the board because this is a temperature more style radio where it's temperature reliant more than you know obviously the components are a factor too but it doesn't have the modern technology like the newer radios do so Temperature does play a factor with the frequency alignment of these. So if it's cold outside and you got this in a mobile, which it doesn't look like you use it mobile. If you do, you take real good care of it because it doesn't really... There's like one mark here maybe where you had a mic plug thing or something, a clip. But uh, all in all, it looks really good. So I'll uh, we'll get it open and uh, get it set up for you. figure I'd shine a little light on the subject here so it looks to be in really good shape inside too um, I'm not seeing anything sticking out of the ordinary it looks like it's not supposed to be there um, real clean board and everything so just a quick alignment for you here and then we'll get the amp on another video I'll, I will uh, well, I can pretty much show you what to do. I don't have to unbox the amp and go through that because I want to get this stuff back to you. So um, you want to make sure with that that you don't put any more than 35 watts peak into it. So that's going to rely more on you on your side with whatever meter you have. And I, I would hope that you have a really accurate meter for that because that's, that's where you need it. That's where the good accurate meter really plays a, a factor. So, you know, if you got something like this... Uh, you're kind of wasting your time or anything like that. I don't mean to poke fun at those meters, but they just don't have any accuracy on the peak side. For carrier, it's okay, but that's really all where it ends. So, you know, there's no way that you can ever calibrate something like that to even match what this would have. I mean, you just can't do it. So, and you can't do it with other meters either. So, the whole I can calibrate it to a bird thing, it doesn't apply to what I ever see here. So, you can say that and it sounds good on a video or whatever but calibrating to a bird if it's not a bird then it's not a bird if it's not LP100A it's not LP100A they all have their own calibration process you can't calibrate one to the other you can't calibrate the bird to the LP100A it just doesn't work like that so um, spend the money if you're really invested in the hobby and get yourself a good meter and it'll last you a really long time that's what I say to everybody so let's do the deviation first because that's an easy one all right, so there's your FM deviation. It's kind of bouncing around a little bit, but uh, it's right about 4.1, sometimes 4.2. So um, we've got it right about where it should be. Just a little higher than 4. I like to go just in case there's any variance, if it changes or something, which you never know sometimes. Things can change ever so slightly. But as long as you're over 4 by a little bit, you'll be fine. It'll be a little bit louder now. 
All right, I got my overhead light kind of close to the meter here. I'm holding the phone by it. So there's your, I set you to about eight point something there. That way if it does change just a little bit, I want you to be somewhere around eight. All the way down, it's gonna be just a little over one, like I said. So now we're gonna look at the oscilloscope here. So we're gonna look at like this here. This is where our carrier is about 438, let's say. And then when I modulate this, now we're at like 937. So we are over 100%. And it's nice and rounded and everything. So it should be a little bit better for you now on AM. It's still nice and rounded off. And everything there. So don't want to go any higher than that. So what happens now, because you only have one adjustment on this radio, when you lower the carrier down. Of course I'm going to resume this in a little bit. That way we can... Get it to scale. Use my bird sampler up here, it's adjustable. So 115 is what we're looking at now. And low power modulation is about 240, 237. So just a little over 100% there too, but still nice and clean. Um, just the way it should. Here it is up here. And then here it is on high power. So this uh, this obviously over here is 27215. And so you can see here, start is 27195, span of 20 kilohertz, obviously, uh, RBW and VBW, 30 hertz. So pretty uh, precise measurement there. There goes your timeout timer. So AM is done. Uh, let's do sideband. All right, if you remember, the sideband kind of looked funky like that. <clears throat> so we're going to try to fix that up for you as well as make the RF power work better because it's supposed to lower the power. And right now, with it all the way down like that, it's not really doing much. You should see that drop a lot. So I will uh, do one at a time here, but uh, first we're gonna try to round this off some more and get it looking a little bit better for you. That's starting to look better there. Yeah, okay. Now let's see. Yeah, so the, there's another adjustment on here that a lot of guys adjust, the one that's I think W3 or something sideband power so what we want to do is lower this yeah it's counterclockwise all the way uh yeah it's still at full power so that's where people are going in and cranking this open so what you want to do is actually go down because you want it to work you want your why would you have rf power if, you, if it doesn't work you know that's defeating the purpose of what it's designed to do so now it's all the way down and now it's all the way up so that's working better and i'm sure it's probably much cleaner now too uh, we're going to look at this just a little bit more. Maybe clean it up just a little bit more. That's better. Um, there. Yeah. So now, when we lower that power down, you can see how it drops so much. That's how it's supposed to work. So if it does, if yours doesn't work like that, somebody watching this, then somebody's went in and tried to what they're doing is they're trying to tune it and get more power out of it but that's not how they work so now the radio is doing on low power on sideband about four watts with the two-tone and then all the way up it's about 20 something so now we'll run the third order intercept test it should be quite a bit better all right so if we look at that now so let's just say somewhere in between these two numbers about 26 now and then when I add that six, we're at about 32. So it's a way cleaner sideband signal now. And that makes a huge difference. So the power is staying where you're wanting it to stay. You're not taking up too much bandwidth and you're just being more compliant with how radio should work on sideband by not spreading out the signal. So that's pretty much it. They're pretty easy to do with the right, right equipment and know how to do it. It doesn't take very long. Uh, let's flip this over, put the lid back on and um, see what it's doing for power. All right, so we're back, and I got your mic, or my mic, but President mic anyways, nonetheless, that come with these. So RF power's up all the way, mic gain's up all the way. This is sideband, and here's our power now. So maybe we dropped a few watts off of what we were, but not a big deal, I don't think. Uh, the signal's gonna be much cleaner now. So that's all the way up. Here's all the way down. So all the way down now it's going to be much less but that's how it should work again remember it's an rf power shouldn't when you turn it down it shouldn't drop it should drop a lot not very little 
here's 12 o'clock 12 o'clock one two one two so these are for unfortunately with the RF power they don't really do much until you get a little below 12 o'clock so here is uh, bring that back just a little bit more so I'll show you kind of for a reference but it is kind of an imperfect design on the RF power it should drop more steady but it doesn't so it's kind of like very limited at certain range but I can show you here as I as I'm talking usually between like here and somewhere in here it really cuts it back so it's I don't know why they designed them like that but there's about 25 watts right there so that's where I would say you should run that 503 HD if you read the stuff that comes with it on um, the documentation from RM Italy they will recommend that no more than 25 in to get a good clean signal out of that amp. If you run more than that in up to like the 35, yeah, it will do a little bit more power. But again, the extra power it's going to give you isn't going to do enough to really make a difference. So it is kind of recommended to run about 25 in and you'll have the best results. So this about right here. Now again, it's all going to differentiate on your setup, because I'm going into a, a perfect 50 ohm load here with the bird dummy load, but with an antenna or uh, whatever you're going to, you know, base or mobile antenna, you may see different impedance match, so you probably will get a little bit different power than what I see here at a certain RF power. So it's very hard for me to say, okay, this is in stone where you should run it. That's why you need to have your own power meter, and it's actually best in some situations to have like a good peak reading meter right on the output of this, like run a jumper from the radio into the meter. So that way you know where to run it, and then whatever you want to do with your output of the amp, you know, once you get it set kind of thing, maybe you can switch them or something. But it's more important to get what you're putting out of the radio right first before you worry about what the amp is going to put out if that makes sense because you don't want to burn the amp by overdriving it so again just talking into my microphone this would make that amp very happy right now and you know an extra watt or so doesn't really hurt anything so that's perfect there but let me show you how big a difference it makes now we'll just turn it down just a little bit more like that and it really starts to drop down actually not too much so um, it's really, for whatever reason, the RF power on these is kind of flaky on, on sideband. Um, but on AM they work a little bit better. So, you know, it's really... Let's turn it down just a little bit more. It's almost like you're adjusting it for either high or low based on that one control. But, you know, as we can see now, just a little bit more and it drops down some. So that would be more like regular, like radio power from like a regular sideband... 40 channels CB or something right there so it does cut it back but again it really doesn't start to till it's like way around here so and just a little bit there's all the way at the bottom there's all the way just a little bit open so one two three one two three check check one two very low there so you do have some play but again you got to have a good meter to determine what you need to put in now on AM um, Again, the same thing would apply. You don't want to swing any more than like 25 in. You can put up to 35 in. <coughs> you don't need to though, that's the thing. You, just because it says you don't need to, like the 25 is going to give you a perfect amount. And it's also recommended in there not to run it on the top uh, setting on the adjustable output of it. They, they say not to run it up there because it you're not gaining any more than what you would by running it like one step back. You do gain a little, but it's not going to help you you know and that's what they explain they have a nice detailed booklet that they give you with the device and it really is helpful to try to run it the best way so this is the um the power all the way down on am one two three four five check check one two one two hello one two one two hello so even at this level once in a great while it peaks up there but not it's not very consistent so you know, I don't know with those on AM because there's not a lot of info out. I'm just going to tell you that you don't want to run this thing wide open into it because it probably won't last. So AM is a tricky one with those. Um, let's just turn it up to about here and see. Put this to about... 
So we got our eight all the way up. And then there's about two and a half right there. So you can see it's not very much up. So So we'll talk and you know now it's swinging a little bit heavier one two three one two three check check hello one two one two this is probably be okay right here I think it's not a matter of driving the snot out of the thing and trying to get every last watt out it's just a matter of playing it safe and just be happy with what you got that kind of thing you know there's a quick burst there but those bursts of power don't stay for very long so you know, again I'm not saying that you should run it on am like this all i'm saying is you know be careful because it's for the guys that run those more are going to be able to tell you more because i will be honest i don't run them i don't use them like that i don't use them on am i've used them on sideband i'm very careful but i'm not using a device like that every day or anything like that so the guys that have, are using them you know that may comment on the video and talk about it they're going to know a lot more about it than i will I'm not going to claim to be any expert with those because honestly I haven't used them enough. So, um, but I will say the ones I've used I've never burned up. So, you know, if you burn one up, then it's too late. You know, you you went too far with it. So, uh, let's look at this radio all the way up. So with it all the way up, it's still swinging just about the same. So you know you didn't really gain anything, and that's not the purpose of what I did. Just gave you just a little deeper modulation and uh, you know a good alignment on sideband so you know the, the radios do what they do you know unless you're unless your uh, watt meter is not accurate or something you know then it's going to show more you did something crazy to the board but this is going to sound really nice over the air and uh, you know honestly like it for all intents and purposes you probably get out pretty good just barefoot with this thing so you know, if you want to run the RM503, then yeah, just be careful with it and, uh, you know, get yourself a quality uh, peak reading meter, something like, uh, I would say for affordability, like that monitor sensor is a good one or something like that, you know. I mean, I got some uh, ones coming in from KPO. They do have a, a plus or a minus rating on, on the peak rating. So, you know, you have to play play uh, that into consideration too, you know. There's, there's also those options but then again you have to factor in okay if it says plus or minus 10 percent okay well what does that exactly mean it means whatever power you're seeing it could be positive 10 percent too much or negative 10 percent too less you know not enough so there's going to be a, an accuracy reading for most meters and you have to look at you know what is best for you kind of thing and they're not going to tell you whether it's plus too much or minus you know that's just going to be what it is so but the radio is kicking butt, you know, just like they always do. And uh, they do get warm, but not it's not burning hot or anything like that. So I think it'll be fine. And uh, that's pretty much it for you, James. So I'm going to try to send this off to you today if I can. If I can get my wife to, to get that uh, box with everything. Uh, I'm going to try to get this off to you today. And hopefully you'll get it tomorrow. So uh, just be, like I say... The, the goal of running one of those is just be careful because they do have input requirements and if you're not careful, you will burn it, you know, unfortunately. So just be careful with it and I wish you all the luck with it. And uh, you got a nice clean radio here now and hope everything goes good for it. I am going to just uh, briefly look at the frequency alignment really quick before I send it off to you. But it was in really good shape before. So I don't think there's a whole lot I can do, uh, just maybe that upper sideband or something. So thanks a lot. Sorry it took me a little a few extra days. Um, I had the weekend here and everything. I had some other stuff going on. And uh, let me know if there's anything else I can do for you. 7-3.